from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Fred Norwood, Northeastern Indemnity Association. Oh, hello, Fred. I haven't heard from you since that case down in Managua, Nicaragua. Got another nice long trip lined up for me? I'm afraid not this time. But if you can leave right away, I wish you'd run down to Baltimore for us. Baltimore? Hmm, that depends. Depends on what? How free I can be with my expense account in the seafood department. Chickatique oysters, soft-shell crabs, terrapin soup. Johnny, if you can get us off the hook on this one, I'll locate your expense account blind. Big one, huh? Over 100000 Murder? Arson? $111,421 missing from a safe. Wow, and you're liable for it if it isn't recovered, huh? For the full amount. But who'd keep that much cash in a safe? Outside of a bank, that is. The Trillingham Tobacco Company. But why? Better get the details from August Trillingham, if you'll take this on. On a freewheeling expense account? Freddy, I'm your boy. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Northeastern Indemnity Association, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the wayward money matter. Expense account item 12630, plane fare and incidentals, Hartford to New York to Baltimore, and a cab to the Sheraton Belvedere. After all, I could afford the best. Item two, a 10 cent phone call to Mr. August Trillingham. He'd be glad to see me. Hmm. Somewhere that name rang a bell. Item three, a buck twenty for a cab to the Trillingham Tobacco Company on Conway near Charles Street. It was a huge old brick building with what I guess you'd call a vaulted roof. Offices at one end of it, and the rest looked like a kind of warehouse. I'm glad you could get here so quickly, Mr. Dollar. The loss only occurred last night, you know. Well, I left Hartford the minute the insurance company called me. So, somebody blew your safe and walked off Opened with a lot of... Opened the safe, Mr. Dollar, and took over $104,000. Do you always keep that much cash on hand? Yes, yes, because of the nature of our business. What do you mean? Well, the tobacco was grown by the farmers hereabouts. Barn cured for a month or two or three and then brought here. Uh-huh. Regraded according to quality and color and tied into hands. Hands? Uh, bunches of 20 or 30 leaves, depending on size. Oh, I see. And then we pack it in hogsheads and ship it to the auction warehouses. We're uh, kind of a middleman between the small farmer and the auction. I said small farmer, Mr. Dollar. Well? Uh, people for whom tobacco is only an incidental crop. There are a lot of them. Since we buy from them outright, they want cash. Not checks or payment due the first of the month. Oh, no, cash. Oh, I see. And uh, you're always gambling on what you'll be able to get at the auctions. That's right. Ah. How, uh, how's business, Mr. Trillingham? Mm, Not as good as I'd like, of course, but I'm sure it'll pick up later in the year. Why do you ask? Oh, just wondered. In a matter like this, I want to know all I can. Yes, but you said that as though you meant to imply that... Uh, that oh, perhaps... I, I meant to imply nothing. Look, you said that safe wasn't cracked. I said it was opened. And I'm sure I know by whom. You, you what? Well, then why send for me? Well, after all, the liability is now your company. Well, who did it? For years, we've had a bookkeeper, a little pipsqueak of a man named Elmer Cockerley. Well, if he, he must have been here 15 or 20 years, even before I bought this business. You haven't always owned it? Oh, no, no, no. I, I made my money during the late 20s, Florida real estate. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Seems to me I've heard something about your success down there. I retired, traveled around till the mid-40s, and then decided to get back into the swing of things, and I bought this business. Yes, okay. Now, about this Elmer Cockerley. Oh, a mild, timid, ineffectual sort of little man. I suppose after 20 or 30 years of this dull, routine job, after seeing and handling so much money all the time... Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, anyhow, at tax time, uh, I decided to have the accounting firm of Hanley, James, Chadwick, Kermer, and Wormsbecker go over our books just as a matter of course. And? It was then that Elmer Cockerley suddenly discovered that some of the records were missing. I see. Things balanced out at the end of the year, mind you, but those three or four months were uh, missing. And it was during that period that Elmer had painted his home, 
bought a new car. Didn't you investigate immediately? Of course. Seems to me it was then that you should have sent for me. Well, since our business is strictly cash, both in and outgoing, there was nothing we could pin on him. What's more, he was as concerned as I was, apparently. And after all, since things finally balanced out, but I wonder. Yeah, I should think you would. And now, since he's the only other person who could open the safe... What does he say about this robbery? He uh, didn't come in this morning. I called his wife. She hasn't seen him since he left for work yesterday morning. You know where he lives? Yes. Do you have a description of his car, license, and so on? Yes, yes, I have. Okay, Mr. Trillingham, I'll notify the police from here. Then I'm going out to his house to see what I can learn there. May I use your phone? Of course. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time a timid soul had finally felt his oats had run off with company money. And usually that type was hard to find. The methodical mind always planned things well, including a getaway. Item four, 80 cents, taxi to a car rental agency. Item five, 50 bucks deposit, and I drove to Elmer Cockerley's home a few blocks off Wilkins Avenue, west of town. I wondered why the old fellow had done it. Sometimes the why can be the best clue as to where to hunt for a man. And you know something? A good part of the why became very clear when the door of Elmer's house was opened. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Wayward Money Matter. Yes, what do you want? Mrs. Cockerley? I'm Mrs. Cockerley. Who are you? Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. Insurance investigator? I haven't even filed a claim on Elmer yet. Oh, you think your husband is dead, Mrs. Cockerley? Of course he is. You think for a minute he'd walk out on me? That's why you think he's dead? Ain't that enough? <clears throat> You've talked with Mr. Trillingham this morning. Of course I have. He wanted to know where Elmer was. I wanted to know where Elmer was. Neither of us knowed, so that was that. So when they find his body, I'll collect his insurance, and that'll be that. And I won't have that helpless little worm around underfoot no more. No more having to baby and nurse him and tie his tie and feed him. Mrs. Cockley. No, sir. The only reason that little shrimp would dare not to come home is if somebody done him in. And when you find him, you can come around and pay me his insurance, and that's that. Now, if that's all you've Just come a minute. Talk... Just a minute. Did Mr. Trillingham tell you that over $100,000 was taken from the safe at the office? Uh, no. Delmer didn't do it. I know he didn't. Do you? Working his fingers to the bone year after year. Handling all that money and him and me just scraping along. Why, if it wasn't for Ben Finishel Finance helping us along now and then, I don't know what we'd have done. Yeah, well, I look. I told him more than once if he wasn't such a spineless little mouse, he'd help himself to some of that money. They'd never miss it, being a cash business like it is, and Lord knows he deserves some of it. Well, what'd he say to that? Scared him. Made him angry. So I'd keep oh, rubbing it in. Oh, great marriage you two had. <laughs> Sometimes he'd scream and yell like a baby. He'd dare to scream at you? I'd let him. I got so sick of him, it did me good to see him blow his top. Believe me, I told him more than once, if I was in his place, I wouldn't hesitate. Well, go ahead, he says. Go ahead. And he'd give me... Go ahead, he says. He gave you what, Mrs. Cockerley? The combination to the safe? Yes. Yes, he did. So what of it? So maybe I went down there and robbed it last night. Well, how did you know it was last night? I didn't tell you that. All right. All right, maybe I did. I'd like to see you put it on me. Maybe I will. You think I can't use that kind of money? You think I don't deserve it after struggling all these years, caring for him for nothing because he didn't have the gumption to get what he should have? You know something, Mrs. Cockley? I doubt if you ever gave him a chance to show any gumption. <laughs> Do you know Elmer? Did you ever see him? No. Then look. Look at his picture here on the hall table. All right. A baby, that's all he is. All a right. Dog. You've made with a lot of big, noisy talk. Now, just Probably a... most of it's a lie. I don't believe you'd live ten minutes with a man if you really felt that way about him. Look, mister. But there must be some reason for it. Some reason for trying to make me suspect you. I told you. Maybe I did do it. Did you? I'd like to see you prove it. Well, I don't think you did. I'd like to see you prove that. I think all you're trying to do is cover up for him, protect him. And I'll say this, you're taking a mighty offbeat way to do it. Uh, 
Now, listen. Where is he? You really think Elmer... Little Elmer could have... No. No, he really didn't have the gumption. All right, who else? He couldn't have, Mr. Dollar. Outside of his books and figures at that office, he... He could hardly take care of himself. That's why he needed me. To tell him what to do and feed him and take care of him. Well, this is quite a change of pace, Mrs. Cockerley. So maybe I did make him toe the line. So what about it? He liked it. Some people are that way. Just like me, I gotta have somebody I can lord it over him. Anything wrong with that? Well? I don't believe a thing you said. Oh, you don't. Now, where is he? Where is Elmer? I don't know. And if he didn't rob that safe, who did? He couldn't. How should I know? Why don't you ask that August Trillingham, his fancy boss that's kept him and me starving all these years? Did you think of him? Everybody's a suspect at a time like Dear this. Dear August. Including his you. His friend, the boss. Used to go catfishing together up the creek. Great privilege for poor little Elmer to go fishing with the boss who made all the money. That's where I thought he was last night when he didn't come home to supper. When he wasn't home all night, poor dear. All right, Mrs. Cockerly, just quit acting. Act. Somebody stole now, that money, and listen. apparently only three people knew the combination of that safe. Trillingham, your husband, and you. I tell you, go ask that Trillingham. But only one of the three has run out, disappeared. No. No, I'll never believe that Elmer did it. He could. Sure he could. Anybody could. Now, where is he? I don't know. I think you do. No. And you're trying to protect him. Or are you waiting to hear from him so you can join him, him and the money? That isn't true. Then why isn't he here, if half of what you told me is true? Because he... Because I'll I... go answer the phone. Hello. Yes, I'm her. Who? Oh. Oh, oh, just a minute. Sergeant Macklin, he says. Oh, the man I talked to at police headquarters. Yeah. Thanks. Johnny Dollar. This is Macklin, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, Mac. Looks like it's all sewed up. Yeah, who? Elmer Cockerley. Driver's license, identification You found the money? Well, what's left of it. They got the money, did they? You know what Cockerley looks like? I've seen his picture. Well, then maybe you better come out here. Where? Hans's Bridge. Hans's Bridge? That's where yeah, we used to go uh, catfishing all the time. It's about nine miles up the creek north of town. Okay, I'll see you there. Yeah, I want you to see if you can identify Cockerley's body. Oh. I see. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the wayward money matter. Without telling Mrs. Cockerley what I'd learned over the phone, I took off in my rental car for the creek north of town for Hans's Bridge. Yeah, this was a crazy case if ever there was one. Elmer Cockerley bookkeeper for the tobacco company was the only real suspect in the $104,000 robbery. And where there's only one suspect, I always begin to wonder. But who else was there? His wife? Maybe. She'd done everything she could to confuse me. The owner of the company, Trillingham? Yeah, I thought of him too. Until I got the word from the police that they'd found Elmer Cockerley, or what was left of it. They'd found the money too, or what was left of it. What's left of it is right, Dollar. I'm afraid most of that 100000 went floating down the creek when Cockerley and his car rolled over into it. Well, we'll see how much of the dough is still inside when we get the car up on the bank. How do you figure it happened, Sergeant? Well, the old boy was making his getaway is all. Going too fast when he hit the turn onto the bridge and plop o into the creek. Hmm. Wouldn't there be skid marks, Mac? Well, he wouldn't have to be going very fast. Hmm. Now, look. Car is up on the bank now. Come on. Yeah. How do you know it's Elmer Cockley inside of it? License number. And one of the boys dove in, brought up his wallet. Well, here she is, Sergeant. High and... Yeah, high and wet. Okay, Les. We'll have a look. Only a few small bills in there. The rest of the dough must be out in Chesapeake Bay by now. All right, boys. Take a look, Dollar. Is that Cockley in there? Yeah. Yeah, that's Elmer. Do you think he drowned? Uh, yeah, or banged around so hard when the car plunged in that... Look. See the bruises on his face and chest? Mm, yeah. Not pretty. And Mac. Well, that's that. Just one more who tried and didn't get away with it. I wonder when they'll learn that it just... Uh, huh? What's that? 
A little scrap of paper out of his pocket. Huh? Torn. Only part of it, see? Night. Pants. Cat. Cat. And, Mac, look here. Yeah, what? This bruise, this mark on the back of his head. Yeah, you really got banged around. Show me one thing in this car that could leave a mark like this. Well, most anything. Door handle, top of the steering pole. No, sir. All the other bruises are on his face, his chest. And there's only one thing I know that leaves a mark like this. Better get the coroner out here before you touch anything. See you later. But look, where are you going? I'll see you later. Now, what under the... Yes, I heard it from the police department, Mr. Dollar, and I... Well, in spite of what I told you earlier, it's hard to believe. Yeah, it is. He'd been such a loyal soul all those years. But I suppose all that cash... And it was a bit more than we usually kept in the safe. I suppose it was just too much of a temptation for him. Or for any other man. Huh? Even you, for instance. What? Are you joking? So, it's not funny. So, business has been pretty bad lately. I didn't say that, Mr. Dollar. I merely said that... I know what you said, Twillingham. And I remember now what I'd heard about your big success in Florida real estate back in the 20s. Well, I don't see what You were one of those guys who sold a lot of swamp and jungle, some of it underwater to suckers from up north. I was young, an opportunist in those You were days. a crook. You're a crook now, and a killer. Mr. Dollar... Now, a natural to hang it on, poor, timid little Elmer Cockerley. Sure, why not? He'd be the natural suspect in anybody's book. Do you realize what you're Let's accusing me of? Let's go fishing. Catfishing. Tonight. At Hans's Bridge. Only you shouldn't have put it into a note to him. What note? The one I found on his body. So you met him there. You slugged him. Put him behind the wheel of his car, then ran it down the embankment into the creek. You thought the rolling over would account for any bruises he'd get. Listen, But you... not that mark on the back of his head, the one made by the butt of a thirty-eight Special. I've seen too many of them telling him. Oh, I see. You still have it. That's right. And I'll use it. You didn't get away with murdering Elmer. You'd never get away killing me. I can go a long ways on $100,000. And before I let you stop me... Uh, huh? Mr. Dollar, the police told me poor Elmer has... Close that <gasps> door. You. You did it. Quiet. I don't know how, but you killed him. Quiet. Close that... Oh, I'll do it myself. Oh, Buster! Uh, yeah, he did it, Mrs. Conkley. And believe me, he'll pay for it. Well, so ends another dirty chapter in the history of crime. I hope the insurance on Elmer makes up in some small way for Mrs. Cockerley's loss of her... Well, I was going to say husband, but... I guess Elmer was kind of a baby to her. To manage, to browbeat, and to love. Expense account total, including transportation back to Hartford, $104.70. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a fishing trip to Lake Mojave Resort. Fishing, that is, for a thief. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Edgar Barrier, Alan Reed, Vic Perrin, and Frank Nelson. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.